Bambir In our absence, um, the First Lady, Comrade Mme Nangagwa, the Vice President and Second Secretary of ZANPF, Honorable General Retired Dr. Zijidien Chwenga, the Vice President and Second Secretary, Honorable Colonel Retired KCD Mohadi, our National Chairman and Minister of Defense, Comrade Osi Zet Mchinguri Kashiri, the Secretary General of NPF, Comrade Dr. Obed Mpofu, members of the Elders Council, members of the Central Committee, members of the Politburo and party officials and comrades who are here. It is my pleasure to welcome you all to this 122nd meeting of the Central Committee, which is our first meeting in 2024, and marks the end of an eventful first quarter of this year. We are convening today a few days before commemorating our 44th Independence Day celebrations under the theme Zimbabwe at 44, Unity, Peace and Development Towards Vision 2030. The celebrations are being held in Murambinda, Maninikalen province, and are being in line with our devolution and decentralization policy. As we celebrate our independence, it is the duty of each and every one of us to safeguard this independence our sovereignty and our hard-won freedom. A people who do not know their history are like trees without roots. It is this recognition that has seen our ZANPF government scaling up programs to Memorialize the sacrifices of our gallant sons and daughters who participated in both the first and the second Chumurenga Umvukelo. Their, their selfless actions ensure that we enjoy the freedom we have today. Shrines and the places of historical significance, such as the Pupu National Monument and the Kamungoma Liberation Monument, have since been unveiled by the Second Republic. (Applause) 
I have tasked the Minister of Home Affairs and Cultural Heritage to identify and establish many more similar sites across all our provinces. Such initiatives are part of efforts by the ZAN PF government to ensure that the illustrious liberation war history of our country is correctly written, correctly told, and preserved <laughs> for both the present and the future generations. We must never forget our past. Since our last Central Committee meeting, we lost Comrade Kenny Rizai Mabuya, who was declared a national hero, and the many sons and daughters of the soil who were interred by the provincial and district heroes across the country. At a regional level, on 4th February 2024, this year, we were saddened by the news of the passing on of the third president of the Republic of Namibia, His Excellency Comrade Haig Genkop. The region and indeed the continent as a whole was robbed of a revered African statesman, a liberation stalwart, and a great friend of the people of Zimbabwe. I now invite the Central Committee to join me as we observe a minute of silence in their remembrance and honor. May you all rise. May their souls rest in peace. I thank you. Take your seats. Comrades, as entrusted by our party constitution under Article 7, Section 37, Subsection 2 and 3, the Central Committee has the duty to oversee the implementation of all policies, resolutions, decisions and programs enunciated by the National People's Conference or Congress. Further, we are tasked to give guidance, supervise and superintend over the functions of central government in relation to the policies and programs outlined by the conference or congress of our revolutionary party, ZANPF. In this regard, we meet today to review progress and proffer strategies and proposals on the activities that were undertaken in respect of the implementation of the various resolutions of the 20th National People's Conference, which we held in Guerrero. At the inception of the Second Republic, we resolved to shift our focus towards economic development, production, and productivity. As the party leadership, we have the collective duty to keep the party accordingly guided. To do so, we must be unflinching in our adherence to the correct party line. Our constitution, the values of unity, patriotism, harmony in the party, discipline in the party, and the hard, honest work should be entrenched 
among the rank and file of our revolutionary party, Zambia. <laughs> My dear comrades, I want to reiterate that we received a fresh mandate less than 12 months ago. Our focus must be towards accelerating the national development agenda of our motherland. As always, we have to continue delivering on our promises to our people. Petty squabbles, jealousies, and misplaced sense of entitlement will never be tolerated in the Revolutionary Party. We must remain solid and united in support of our ZAN-PF policies and programs. It is critically important that, as the leadership of the party, we continue to lead from the front. Let us be productive right from the individual and the household level to our villages and cells, branches, districts, and provinces. Our national development mantra, Nika Inovakwa, Inotongwa, Inonamatirwa, Nevenevayo, Ilizwe Lakiwa, Liwuswe, Likule Kelwe, Navani Kazvalo, is a fundamental philosophy. It is not a mere slogan or empty words. It is a philosophy. It is deep and a strategic philosophical call to action, a call to productivity, and a call to hard work as we build our country towards a prosperous future. We must be remembered by future generations for unity and productivity. The practical implementation of this mantra will guarantee the freedom, independence, and sovereignty of our country, as well as the people's government and our colossal revolutionary mass party, ZANPF, for perpetuity. Under ZANPF, the Second Republic is marching on day and night, unstoppable. <laughs> Going forward, all provincial chairmen are directed to convene special meetings of our structures, beginning with the provincial coordinating committees down to the sales to discuss pertinent economic policies, programs, and projects. I want now to ask my share of central chairman, have you met Sumuka? Vice Chairman? Secretary? Machine Central? Anybody from Machine Central? A Hingal Ripuan, Nabunsa? No Sangana? Sakanak. Machine? Yes? No Sangana? And so, I am a Muslim. I am a Muslim. I am a Muslim. I am a Muslim. I am a
Alléluia. Manikali. Ma pesirani. Last week, Last week, I'm not going. Masingo. You know, Sangana, I got to see three weeks ago, In the last week, Sunday. Very good. PEC. Much West. Much South. Our second PCC was supposed to be today, Your Excellency. It was paved the way for Central Committee. Was supposed. To. Yeah, we it paved the way for the Central Committee. This is our second. Supposed this year. Means you didn't. Okay. Hey, Harar. Ah, kundo kune namu. Thank you, Your Excellency. Our last meeting was on the 8th of April. Please see me to the... April, which year? Hmm? Last week. Ah, very good. Thank you, Your Excellency. Okay, thank you. Developmental targets must be set right from the world level towards growing our district, provincial, and ultimately the national GDP of our country. Economic related departments of the party across all levels should give active support in this regard. Comrades, the Central Committee also convenes on the backdrop of the climate change induced drought which we are currently experiencing. As I stated in my recent declaration of a national state of disaster, due to the drought last week, our ZANPF government will not let anyone starve. <laughs> our government is well capable of handling this situation. Zan successfully prosecuted a protracted 16-year armed liberation struggle. We reclaimed our land and are making it productive against all odds. Together in unity, our nation mitigated the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. We will surely manage a drought year. This is the confidence and hope that the party leadership should instill among the membership and the people of our great nation at large. We have put in place measures to ensure that enough food is available. The party should play its part in 
speedy and timely identification of those in need of assistance. Government is scaling up programs to revitalize, modernize, and climate proof the agriculture sector. Resources are being availed to accelerate the construction of dams and establishment of irrigation infrastructure across our provinces. The presidential board drilling program will continue in full force and all our 35,000 villages will have at least one ball and an agro-business unity per village. <laughs> Currently, we are implementing a robust winter cropping program, which will see more land being put under wheat and uh, winter maize. Last week, I laid the unprecedented opening of our national votes and the launch of our new structured gold backed currency, the Zimbabwe Gold Zig. <laughs> this follows the resolve and the bold decision by the Second Republic to back our currency against our gold and strategic mineral reserves and I showed the nation that indeed what we say we practice. <laughs> Our resources are being leveraged to guarantee sustainable economic independence, sovereignty and prosperity of our great motherland Zimbabwe. The membership and the communities in general should be well briefed on this new transformational development. Comrades, ZANPF remains a revolutional mass party, ideological, sound, and structurally solid. We continue to unflinchingly focus on the policies and programs that will transform the quality of life of our people. We are a disciplined and a patriotic party. This is reflected in the political and the socio-economic success milestones we are realizing, even under the illegal and unjust sanctions imposed on our country. Since 2018, we are among the top five fastest growing economies in Africa. Our GDP grew from US 16 billion US dollars in 2018 to the current US 47 billion. <laughs> Putting us well on the course to realize an upper middle income status by 2030. ZANPF is indeed delivering development and prosperity for our beloved nation. I want to congratulate you and the all structures of the party for our resounding victories in the various by-elections held since our last meeting. <laughs> Let us continue to scale up mobilization strategies and programs to win the hearts and the minds of the people across the social, economic, and the political divide. The party has a duty to win back all the urban constituencies and the wards so that all citizens can enjoy improved service delivery and the benefits of our ZANPF people-centered policies and programs. Unity seamless synergies and the collaboration between the party and the government structures remain integral to accelerate our development. Gone are the days of silo mentalities. There is no room for mazake zake agudara. Our 
our structures must always complement and be at the forefront of implementing the policies and programs of our party-led government. I once again challenge you to shift our focus from the politics of positions to that of production, productivity, and prosperity. In this regard, leaders at all levels must abide by the party constitution, its principles and its values. As a country under siege from our detractors, we must remain united. There is no room for squabbles among ourselves. Comrades, we have said Zimbabwe is a friend to all and an enemy to none. Through the implementation of policies which attract both foreign and domestic investments, we are augmenting our internal efforts to attain Vision 2030 in record time. Last month, our nation, sorry, later this month, our nation will be hosting the Zimbabwe International Trade Fair, which will be officially opened by our brother, the President of the Republic of Kenya, His Excellency Dr. William Ruto. In line with the theme of the ZITF, which is in the court, innovation, catalyzing industrialization and the trade, end of court, I urge the party to take advantage of the ongoing developments in the ICT sector and nurture strategic partnerships towards the modernization of our party systems and structures. Our party members in the business and SME sector should be encouraged to attend such events to expand business knowledge as well as share skills and ideas. I want to take this opportunity, dear comrades of this meeting, to invite our party members to come in their numbers to attend the independence celebrations in Murambinda, Manikaland province. The entire country is represented here in this room. You have individual and a collective duty to see that our independent celebrations are a success. In conclusion, I urge us as the Central Committee to continue superintending and guiding party affairs with a greater sense of energy, resolve, and integrity. Let us now change our agenda, I thank you.